Everybody wants to divert to exercise. No one wants to change their diet. Everybody says, oh, I'll run my way out of this. You can't. There is no exercise that can mitigate the negative effects of processed food. It's just that simple. You cannot outrun a bad diet. Now, why do I say that? Remember those eight subcellular pathologies from before? Glycation, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, insulin resistance, membrane instability, inflammation, methylation, and autophagy. Every single one of those is made better by food. Exercise makes four of those better. It makes mitochondrial dysfunction better, that's good. It makes insulin resistance better, that's good. It makes inflammation better, that's also good. And it makes autophagy better. So, exercise is the second best thing you can do for yourself. But it doesn't do a thing for glycation, it doesn't do a thing for oxidative stress, it actually makes oxidative stress worse. It doesn't do a thing for membrane stability and it doesn't do a thing for methylation. Bottom line, yes, exercise is great, you should do it, but you can't use exercise as your out. You can't use it as your escape hatch. You can add it to a diet. You can't in replace a diet. In addition, and this is really important, the beneficial effects of exercise are relatively short-lived. People say, oh, you know, I exercise once a week, not enough. Oh, I exercise twice a week, not enough. In order to get any meaningful effect on uh, consistent exercise, it really needs to be three times a week or more. And the reason for that is because the changes in glucose transport that occur because of exercise are mitigated very quickly. And in fact, after two weeks, you, it's like you didn't exercise at all. All the benefits of any exercise will be completely gone within two weeks. There is no um, cumulative benefit. There's only the benefit that you obtain at the time and perhaps one day later. This is why, for instance, elite athletes actually are very upset when they have to travel because that's a day that they don't they're not able to exercise and their performance goes down. Now, what is exercise doing? It's increasing the glucose transporters that go up to the muscle to be able to grab glucose and bring it into the muscle in order to be able to bring the serum glucose down. And that's a good thing. So without question, exercise is one of the ways for glucose clearance and to a tissue that needs it like muscle. So again, I am for exercise, but exercise cannot solve the problems of a bad diet. The improvement in heart disease and diabetes by changing diet is a 35% reduction in heart disease and diabetes. That's pretty darn good. The improvement by changing your exercise capacity for heart disease and diabetes is 25%. Diet's better than exercise when it comes to mitigation of chronic disease. But of course, the two of them are better together than separately. Well, what kind of exercise? Well, turns out there are two basic kinds of exercise. There's cardio, and then there's what's known as high intensity intermittent interval training, or HIT. And that's basically like pumping iron. The combination of the two is actually best. The cardio is good for increasing certain mitochondria in certain muscles. The high intensity interval training is necessary for increasing the kind of mitochondria in other tissues. And so the combination of the two together is really best. Ultimately, Starting and stopping and doing it multiple times and frequently throughout the day seems to have more benefit than a prolonged exercise of say an hour. So if you're challenged by exercise, the single best thing you can do, get a dog, because that dog's gonna exercise you. And he's gonna exercise you at least four times a day. And you'll have a good time, I promise, get a dog. All exercise raises blood sugar levels acutely, all of them.
And the reason is because you're activating the adrenergic nervous system. You are you know, re releasing epinephrine. It's going to the liver to liberate stored glycogen into glucose. They all raise blood glucose acutely. The question is, how quickly does that blood glucose go down? That blood glucose rise from exercise is, from a clinical standpoint, meaningless. That's not where the action is. The action is what happens to postprandial glucose and how high does that postprandial glucose go. So you do not need to worry about the post-exercise glucose rise. Ultimately, that will take care of itself. And the reactive oxygen species that one makes because of that exercise, those will be dissipated very quickly if you even have a remotely normal diet with a remotely decent uh, degree of antioxidants in your diet. So that's not concerning.